So we're at cervical work at this point. So to start with, I'm probably going to do just a little bit of a resting position for my client. So I'm going to have her take some nice deep breaths in and out, just try to relax her shoulders. And as she's doing that, breathing in and out, the compressions that we can do here are shoulder compressions. It's an alternating type of compression where you'll notice I'm pushing on my right hand, then I'm pushing on my left my right and my left and I'm simply just kind of pushing the shoulder down towards the feet. Again, getting the client kind of just relaxed a little bit more when we start this cervical work. Now you could be doing some scalp work as well if you do decide to use scalp work in your treatment. It's just going to be a position where you lay your fingers on the scalp, and I'm, I'm not moving the hair, I'm moving the skin under or over the underlying structures. So it's simply going to look like this, and, and you're going to move your body as you do it as well. I don't want you to do a lot of like movement with your fingers or movements with your wrist. It's just you leaning in and out and again moving the skin over the tissue underneath not moving the hair you can do it in one spot pick your head fingers up and move it to another spot just try to you know get all the parts of the scalp you can do thumb pad compressions and kneading into the sagittal suture at the top of the of the scalp right into that sagittal suture so scalp massage should not last very long. It's just a small portion, relaxing the client. So I've done compressions, scalp massage. I'm ready to undrape. So I'm going to just undrape for the neck today. I'm not undraping for the chest. So I'm going to find the bilateral clavicles. Bi meaning two, bilateral clavicles. I found them with my fingertips. I'm going to bring my arms out to the side. I don't want to roll my sheets here. My hands come to the sides out near the shoulders and I'm simply going to roll my sheet under once, roll my sheet under twice. I can see the clavicles already. Move your stool to one side, tuck securely underneath the shoulder, move to the other side, tuck underneath that shoulder. Your drape should be nice and clean and tight and feel secure for the client. Dry work. So I'm going to put my fingers under the back. My thumbs are going to stay on top. And I'm going to create a pincer grasp. I'm going to squeeze my fingers and thumb together and just lean back and pull tissue up towards me. So two ways of doing it. You can do it together, pulling both hands at the same time. Again, I'm going to lean back in, squeeze my thumb and fingers together, and lean back. You want to try and pick up as much tissue as possible. The other alternative is to do them alternating. So I pull with my right hand, and then I squeeze and pull with my left hand. Right hand, left hand. And again, body mechanics here, you want to keep your head up, keep your back straight, you're right at the edge of your stool as you work, never want to slump over as you're working. The other thing to remember too about this particular technique that I'm doing right now is I only want to do it to the point that I have muscle tissue as I pull back. I never want to just get it to the point where it's just skin because that will feel pinchy to the client. So make sure you're grasping on good muscle bellies there and lean back. The second technique I want to use is for the posterior neck specifically. And if you think about a long rope, and if you were pulling a rope, you would have to squeeze your thumb and fingers together on the rope and then pull back. Thumb and fingers on the rope and pull back. We're going to apply this technique 
to the posterior neck. Nice and slow though, we're going to squeeze and draw our hands back towards us. So I'm going to start with my right hand coming underneath the neck and just lean your body weight. Squeeze your thumb and fingers together and lean back. You want to do your best to keep the back of their head on the table. So that means that as I do this pulling technique on the posterior neck, I am not going up into the hair. I'm not going past the hairline. I'm staying right in the posterior neck tissue, the skin and muscle. So I'm starting to feel the tissue warm up very nicely between my hands. Blood flow is increasing locally. Tissue is starting to relax. So this would be a good time for me to then add my lotion. So I'm going to take my lotion out. Again, things that you don't want to do. I don't ever want to lay my lotion on the table. Uh, I could roll around. You always want to have it either in a pocket or, if nothing else, on the floor next to you. Warm that lotion up in your hands. And we're going to apply the lotion out across the chest, around the shoulders, and then up the back of the neck. So a good way to start this is sort of in a prayer position. Start right above the sternal notch and apply that lotion out across, around the shoulders, and then maybe one hand at a time to put the lotion on the back of the neck. Bring your hands together again. Kind of push towards the feet as you apply the lotion around the shoulders, and then one at a time up the back of the neck. All right, we've got our lotion on. It's time to work specifically into one side of the neck. So I'm going to work on her right side. So I'm going to slide my stool to the opposite corner of where I'm going to be working. My hand comes under her neck, hand on top of her head. I'm going to slide her head towards me, and then I'm going to rotate her nose towards me and just cradle her head in my palm. My one hand then will begin work with my palm starting right below the mastoid process. And I'm going to start with open palm effleurage out across the shoulder and then lean back in. One thing I want you to be mindful of and aware here is this effleurage is not coming from my shoulder. You'll notice I am leaning in and then coming back out. So it's my body weight, not shoulder strength. I'm not pushing with my shoulder. I'm pushing with my body weight. Out, come to the tip of the shoulder, and then stroke back. Again, no pressure really coming back to begin with. One more time. A couple of things to keep in mind here as well as you work into this area. One, you do not want your hands to come under the drape. Okay, again, this is a very important boundary. Draping is a boundary, so I'm not coming under that sheet. Second, the clavicle, which is right here, I'm not coming above the clavicle. I'm not getting into this tissue. My line of work is basically right across here and then in a moment I'll be getting into specific structures here like scalenes and the like. So I'm just going straight out and back. I'm going to change my tool and I'm going to use a loose fist. So I make a loose fist, start right below the mastoid, push out, lighten your pressure right when you get to that acromion process, open your hand, now this time, I'm going to push the back of my hand down into the table. You'll know, you'll see kind of how her shoulder sort of rises. And I'm going to dig my fingers into that posterior neck and upper back tissue as I come up the posterior neck, nice and slow. Use the table as a lever. So what I just did was I pushed the back of my hand into the table and then scooped my fingers up the back of her neck. So out across, open your hand, 
come underneath the shoulder, push the back of your hand into the table, fingers are pointing towards the ceiling, and then I'm just scooping my fingers up towards me. All right, we've got the area nice and warmed up. Petrissage. So with three fingers, and you want to make kind of an arc with your fingers. I don't want my fingers to bend back. I want a little bit of an arc to them. Start right below the mastoid process and sink in to the tissue. Find those TBPs. You'll get that resistance. And here again, the circles, the circular kneading that you're going to use is very, very slow. And the circles are very, very small. So again, I'm not using fingers, I'm not using my wrist. The movement is coming from my body, basically doing this. So apply that pressure and move your body. Small circles. And there is a, an imaginary line from the mastoid process down to the clavicle. You're following this line with these specific techniques. So we're following this all the way down. So just simply nice and slow. Cervical work should not be rushed at all. It's very slow. Uh, a lot of tension obviously is going to be felt in this area. Again, I'm still moving my body. And I just keep moving down towards the clavicle. And as you get towards the clavicle, you're going to run into, more than likely, some very tight scalene muscles. Very small circles here to address those probably very hypertonic scalenes. The other option that you have to use here, tool-wise, is thumb pad. Either one is fine. If you do use a thumb pad, the fingers are going to come under their neck and you're going to just use your thumb instead. Now, here again, I'm not using my thumb. I'm not moving my thumb in a circle. I'm trying to keep my thumb still, and my body is, again, creating the technique, creating the movement. Personally, I think thumb pads are better to use really closer to the clavicle. They can address the scalenes a little bit better than using your finger pads. But again, uh, you can use what feels best to you. The thumb pads usually work very well here. Once I have done my specific work into the lateral side of the neck, I need to smooth everything out. So I'm going to go back to my open palm, place it right under the mastoid, and push out and really keep a nice pressure here. Don't lighten your pressure. Go all the way out and come back. Once or twice is fine. Push all the way out. And come back. Now I'm going to move the client's head and my stool back to a centered position. Nice and slow. And I'm going to come in with some nice pincer grasp again. Just kind of how I started the whole cervical work. When I do one side, when I finished one side, I don't want to just take the head all the way to the other side immediately. I'd like to have a nice transition. Transitions like we've done anywhere else on the body. So I'm going to come back to this technique. And when I've done that a few times and I'm ready to go to the other side, then I will move my stool the next corner of the table and repeat that process on the second side of the neck. After that second side of the neck, we're almost done. A couple of, of uh, important techniques to use here. A stretch and a suboccipital release. So if I want to stretch out these muscles on this side of the neck, I'm going to move my client's head in the opposite direction. So, I'm going to place my hands on each side of the client's head, keeping her nose towards the ceiling. I'm going to slide the head to this side. I'm going to keep my hand here. My hand that was on this side of her, of her head is going to come to this shoulder. I'm going to push the shoulder towards the feet. 
just to kind of stabilize that shoulder. And then I'm going to put a little bit more pressure onto the side of the head to get a nice stretch to that area that we just worked on. Good idea to hold this stretch for a good 15 seconds or, or thereabout and encourage the client to take some nice deep breaths in. We're kind of coming to the end of our full body treatment. Some last diaphragmatic breaths are probably in order at this point. Slide the head back to center again. Again, before I move the head to that side to stretch it, I would transition and go back into my pincer grasp a few more times. Last technique, your suboccipital release. So, you want to start your hands underneath the back, about halfway down the medial border of the scapula. Point your fingers towards the ceiling while they are under the back and simply pull your hands up the spine. Your fingers are kind of brushing across the spinous processes until you get to the occiput and you can't go any further. At that point, you're going to lift the client's head up onto your fingers, keep the back of your hands on the table, and push up. And simply, you know, if the client's head kind of wobbles a little bit back and forth, that's fine. It means you've got the technique down. Encourage the client to take some nice deep breaths in. And as she does, the point that we want to happen here is that the head is going to start to slowly drop back into your palms. So the technique in this position, the palms should not be feeling the back of the head. The head should be up, but by the end of the technique, their head should be resting in your palms. They just take nice deep breaths in and really just try to let their head fall back into your fingers. This technique can go very quickly, or it may take a minute or so. Uh, just be patient with the technique. Once you've gotten the release that you want, final technique, final thing we want to do is stretch out that posterior neck. So slowly you're going to stand up and bring the client's chin towards their chest. And then in an alternating fashion like we did at the beginning with the rope pulling, you're going to just kind of scoop up the back of the neck, stretching out the posterior neck that we just worked on. And then finally, set the client's head back on the table, bring your hands to the side, take out your tucks, and roll the sheet back to have the client redraped.